Hi, and welcome. I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver, Presbyterian Minister in Eastern Ontario, and thank you for joining us for today's Questioning Pastor. The question today is, is Christianity nothing more than a cliche? And the answer is yes and no. Okay. Now that might surprise you. So let's go back just a little bit. Christians have a habit of using pet phrases. We'll talk about the gospel or the good news, salvation, Jesus saves, being born again, speaking in tongues, slain in the spirit. There's a whole uh, range of things we talk. Uh, I don't think Presbyterians use too many of those. We do use some. Uh, we have our own. We we'll talk about predestination and double predestination, or at least we used to. And I'm sure there's other buzzwords or, or jargon that uh, uh, people would recognize that we don't because it's just ordinary speech to us. Well, for Christians, if they're throwing these words around and phrases around, stop and ask them what they mean. What do you mean by the gospel? What do you mean by born again? What do you mean by speaking in tongues? If they can't answer you, then all they've done is learn the phrases. And I don't know if for them, Christianity may just be just one phrase book or one cliche after another. I, I have no idea. Uh, how strong their, the people's faith is if they can't explain what those words mean. If they've never learned the story, but just the pet phrases. And in that case, chances are it is cliches. My father was a research scientist and uh, he used to, of course, he used the chemical uh, jargon of his field. Uh, and uh, he could talk and do great presentations at conferences. And I've read some of the textbooks and I'm like, what on earth are they saying? It's just one phrase after another that I have no understanding of. But he also talked to groups like the Lions Club and Knights of Columbus. And I, had, I was fortunate enough to have some of those speeches. And it was like, this is easy to understand. Wow. That's quite a knack. What he told me at somewhere along the line was, if you can't talk about your subject in words of two syllables or so, then you don't know what you're talking about. Some people like to use the big words, throw them around because it makes them sound like they're, they're important people or they're very knowledgeable people when they're not. You have to be able to take those big words and break them down into ordinary words that ordinary people can understand. The lesson was brought home to me when I was accepted into a seminary. I changed how I was talking. I started using those phrases like Jesus saves and whatever. And a friend of mine, very good friend, asked me, point blank, do you believe what you're saying? Or are you saying it simply because you think you're expected to talk like that? I stopped talking like that instantly. And it stuck with me. The phrases themselves may be right, but they also may be meaningless. By the end of seminary, I had come, I accepted all of what those phrases said or meant, but I could put it in my own words. And that has a bigger impact. So I go, okay, we throw around the good news. What exactly is the good news? Tell me. We talk about Jesus saves. What is Jesus saving us from? What is Jesus saving us for? Tell me. If you can tell me, if you can answer and explain, 
then those cliches aren't cliches. They've become mnemonic devices. Okay, what does that mean? It means they're ways to remember the story. So Jesus saves, or Jesus gives me the victory, okay, brings to mind the whole story of what Jesus did on earth and what his death on the cross cost him and what it bought for me. And all that's wrapped up in the phrase, I have victory in Jesus or Jesus is the victory. So saying those two words opens up that whole door to the story. Born again makes me think for a moment to reflect how have I been changed by God? How have I been transformed? Okay, so at those points, yes, I might use the cliches, but I'm using them to remind myself of the story. So they're no longer cliches. They've become memory aids, mnemonic devices, to put it in fancy terms. So at that point, those phrases point to the deeper truth of Christianity. And no, Christianity is not a cliche. <coughs> but there's a problem. Who are you talking to? Okay, really think about that. When Jesus was talking to the Pharisee Nicodemus and the rich young ruler, he was debating points of the law. He knew what they knew. And he could debate law, debate the Torah in terms they would understand. When he's talking to a crowd, he's not debating the law. He's telling stories. He's talking about a shepherd who has 100 sheep and has lost one. And he does everything he can to find that lost sheep. That's what God's like. And the shepherd's an audience going, I know, wow, that's what God's like. Okay. Or the woman who has 10 coins and lost one and you know, spends the rest of their day cleaning up the house, trying to find that one coin that's lost. And when she finds it, she's so happy. That's what God's like. And all the women and housewives are going, wow, I get it. Okay. What Jesus did was he changed the way he talked so that people could understand him. And I might even have, give you, uh, go into that a bit more in another uh, session question. But that's what happens, you know, when we use the pet phrases, we're basically creating a wall between us and other people. Christians can understand what you're talking about. Non-Christians don't. So I made the promise, or I accepted my father's challenge a long time ago, to try to stay away from the big phrases and the cliches and to stick to the ordinary words. So I don't talk about born again that much. I'll talk about how has God changed you? Think about that. And I'll, you know, I may tell a story around it. I won't say Jesus saves from what or for what, but I might, again, this is what he's given us. This is why we can hold on in tough times. This is where we have, if you want protection, depending on what the issues are. Because those are things that non-Christians can understand. What is the good news? Well, I have to tell people why it's good. And I don't wanna tell them why it's good if I have to you know, knock them to the ground saying you're a bad person, hit you on the head, that's proof you're bad, wham, wham, wham. And now I can help you get up on your feet. Uh, I don't think that's good news. But for someone who's feeling like they've been knocked down on the ground, I can help you on your feet. And now I have to find a way to tell the good news that is for everyone, even for those who don't feel like they've been knocked down. And that's going to be a challenge. But that's my challenge, not yours. 
So the answer in the end is yes and no. If Christians are throwing around phrases and don't know what they mean, cannot explain them, then they're using cliches and they've reduced Christianity to just one cliche after another. But if Christians are using those words, those phrases, and can explain what they mean, can tell you the story, they've got the substance, they've got the content, then they're using them as mnemonic devices, memory aids, then the story they're sharing, the Christianity they're telling you about, is a lot more than one cliche after another. There's substance, there's meat, there's food for you to eat. And the goal for all of us is to explain so that people can understand. We know we won't reach everyone. But we don't want our jargon to create a wall between you and God. So if you don't know what something means, ask. The problem with jargon is we use it so often we don't even know it's jargon. So it's up to people who aren't Christian or who are, have minimal contact with Christianity or minimal understanding of Christianity Ask us, what do we mean? And you'll find out what the story is and how deep our own faith is. So that's it for today. Once again, I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaber, and thank you for joining us for today's Questioning Pastor. Take care, God bless, and see you next time.